is the story of powerful and virtuous kings of ancient India, whose history spans tens of thousands of years and more. While most Indians will know the full family tree of Mughal invaders from Babur to Aurangzeb, however, not many Indians will be able to recall the family tree of the great Kuru dynasty in which were born the mighty Pandavas and Korwas. Today, let us try to simplify it so that every Indian will remember it and take pride in their ancient history. By a modest estimate, at least 5,500 years ago, there lived a mighty and virtuous king of Hastinapur named Dushyant. He was from the lunar lineage, Chandravamsh, also known as Puruvamsh after King Puru. Once, King Dushyant fell in love with Shakuntala while visiting the hermitage of Rishi Kanav. Shakuntala was the daughter of Brahmrishi Vishwamitra and Apsara Mainaka before ascending to heavens when Mainaka left her daughter on the riverfront. The baby was surrounded and protected by Shakunt birds, hence named as Shakuntala. She was adopted by Rishi Kanav. Shakuntala gave birth to a boy who was so mighty since childhood that he would tame the wildest of animals in the forest and even count teeth of the tiger. He came to be known as Sarvadaman, one who tames and subdues everything around. After the union of Doshayant and Shakuntala, Sarvadaman ascended the throne. He was named as Bharat and ruled with justice and fairness. He is said to have controlled the entire earth. All his descendants and even the people in the kingdom were referred to as Bharat or Bharat Vamshi. The landmass was referred to as Bharti or Bharat Varsha. Pandavas and Karvas have been referred to as Hey Bharat at many places in Mahabharata. Today, any Indian in the world can be called as Bharat meaning from the Bharat Vamsha. After some generations of Bharat, King Kuru was born in this Chandra Vamsh, and thereafter, the lineage was called as Kuru Vamsh. In this generation was born King Pratip. King Pratip had a calm son, Shant Putra, hence named as Shantanu. Shantanu married Ganga and Devrat was born. After Ganga left Shantanu, he wanted to marry Satyavati from the Nishad clan. Her father agreed marriage if Devrat promises to never become a king and his sons should never claim to be kings. Devrata took a strong vow that he will never ever marry and maintain celibacy his entire life. Due to this vow, Devrat was now called as Bhishma. So accordingly, after the marriage of Shantanu and Satyavati, her son Chitra Angad ascended the throne but died. He was followed by Vichitra Virya, who married Ambika and Ambalika with the help of Bhishma. Vichitra Virya died early without leaving a higher. Amba was the third sister of Ambika and Ambalika and was later reborn as Shikhandi. Satyavati had a son Krishna Dev Payan before marriage from Rishi Parasha. Krishna Dev Payan later became famous as the greatest of the Rishis, Maharishi Vedvyas, the one who arranged the Vedas in order and the one who wrote Mahabharat and other important Hindu scriptures. From Vedvyasa, the widow daughter-in-law Ambika bore Drit Rashtra and Ambalika bore Pandu. But third time, Ambika replaced herself with a maid Parishrami from whom Vidur was born. Hastinapur King Pandu married Kunti, the sister of Vasudeva, father of Lord Krishna. Later on, Pandu married Madri also. Kunti gave birth to Yudhishthira, Bhima and Arjuna, while Madri gave birth to Nakula and Sahdeva. These five were known as Pandavas, the sons of Pandu. They all were highly educated in Vedas and scriptures and commanded powerful celestial weapons. Ritrashtra married Gaandhar Princess Gandhari along with her 10 other sisters on the same day. Ritrashtra became father to 100 sons and one daughter Doshala. Duryodhana was the eldest of the 100 Korewas. The Doshala was married to Sindhu Naresh, Jaidrath. Dhritarashtra ascended throne after death of King Pandu, which was the seed of the beginning of the biggest recorded battle at Kurukshetra, the land of Kuru dynasty. Now, let us go through this family tree once again. I have simplified it for an easy understanding. I hope you could remember this simplified family tree. Teach this to your kids. Be proud of your ancient heritage of mighty and virtuous rulers of your great country. Thank you.